Heraklion, Egypt. The legendary beginnings of Heraklion go back as far as the 12th century BC, and it's mentioned multiple times by ancient Greek historians. The city was said by Herodotus to have been visited by Helen of Troy before the Trojan War began. It's also said to be the site where the divine hero Heracles took his first footsteps in Africa. Known as Thonis by the Egyptians, Heraklion was originally built on adjoining islands in the Nile River Delta and was intersected by canals with a number of harbors and anchorages. The city was one of Egypt's main ports for international trade and the collection of taxes. Around 150 BC, several major earthquakes followed by tidal waves led to a 110 square kilometer portion of the Nile Delta collapsing under the sea, taking Heraklion with it. It's been left relatively undisturbed beneath the sea for thousands of years, with sand and other debris covering the remains of the city and making accidental discovery very unlikely. In the early 2000s, however, a group of divers working off the Egyptian coast found a large piece of rock under the seabed and brought it up to land. It was a section of Hapi, the god of fertility, whose statue stood at the western mouth of the Nile as a gatekeeper for Heraklion. They continued searching and eventually unearthed six more pieces, along with other treasures, including the ruins of temples, shards of pottery, precious jewels, coins, oil lamps, processional barges, and busts. As the years have gone on, more and more artifacts continue to be found. In 2021, a team from the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology, led by French marine archaeologist Frank Godio, uncovered new parts of the underwater city. The new discoveries included remains of a large tumulus, a Greek funerary area, along with sumptuous finery offerings that suggested, quote, spectacular ceremonies must have taken place there. The discovery of these kinds of artifacts within Heraklion points to the interplay between pharaonic and Greek societies and the role trade played in binding the two together. Ongoing surveys and excavations of Heraklion bring new knowledge of the fallen city every year. Pavla Petri, Greece. Located in the Peloponnesus region of southern Greece lies the underwater ancient city of Pavla Petri. Submerged four meters underwater, some consider it to be the basis for the legendary story of Atlantis. Nearly 5,000 years old and dating from around 2800 to 1200 BC, it is the oldest known underwater city in the world. Sea level rises and three to four different earthquakes pushed the city down until it was submerged around 1000 BC. Although Pavla Petri has eroded over thousands of years, the town layout remains as it was. This is thanks to shifting sands and the settlement's enclosure in a protected bay. Discovered in 1967 by Nicholas Fleming and mapped by a team of archaeologists from Cambridge, Pavla Petri was an incredibly well-designed city with roads, two-story houses with gardens, temples, a cemetery, and a complex water management system, including channels and water pipes. The center of the city was dominated by a large plaza, measuring around 40 by 20 meters. Although Pavla Petri was uncovered over 50 years ago, it wasn't until 2009 that the city was able to be properly surveyed. The University of Nottingham, under the direction of Dr. John Henderson, began a five-year Pavla Petri underwater archaeology project which used a combination of archaeology, underwater robotics, and state-of-the-art graphics to survey the seabed. Marine archaeologists, aided with 3D sonar mapping technology, were able to digitally survey the entire site, and what they found completely surpassed all expectations. They uncovered thousands of artifacts, which helped create a deeper understanding of what everyday life would have looked like in Pavla Petri. Ceramics dating back to the end of the Stone Age suggest that the city was so old that it existed in the period of the famous Greek epic, the Iliad. The discovery of a possible megaton, a monumental structure with a large rectangular hall, also suggested that the town had been used by the elite, elevating its status. Historians believe that the ancient city 
was a center of commerce for the Minoan and Mycenaean civilizations. The future of Pavla Petri remains uncertain. The fragile remains are at risk due to their lack of protection, pollution, waves, current, and tourism. With less than 1% of the ocean floor having been surveyed to date, it's places like Pavla Petri that keep the idea of an Atlantis alive. Yonaguni Monument, Japan. The sea off Yonaguni, the southernmost of the Ryukyu Islands in Japan, is a popular diving location during the winter months due to its large population of hammerhead sharks. In 1987, local diver Kinichiro Aratake, a director of the Yonaguni Cho Tourism Association, noticed a series of almost perfectly carved steps with straight edges submerged 25 meters below the surface of the sea. Shortly after this discovery, a group of scientists directed by university professor Masaaki Kimura visited the formations. The group claimed that the stepped monoliths must be man-made and that they were at least 10,000 years old, possibly a remnant of the mythical lost continent of Mu. In a 2007 revision of these statements, Kimura changed his stance and estimated the formations dated to 2,000 to 3,000 years ago. He believes he can identify a pyramid, castles, roads, monuments, and a stadium. Some historians believe that Kimura's claims are pseudo-archaeological and that the steps are a product of nature. Indeed, the site resembles natural formations seen elsewhere in the world, with distinctly defined edges and flat surfaces, such as Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland, whose interlocking columns were formed by a volcanic eruption thousands of years ago. The formations are also attached to a larger rock mass, further propelling the idea that the Yonaguni is a natural phenomenon rather than man-made. Neither the Japanese Agency for Cultural Affairs nor the government of Okinawa Prefecture recognizes the features as important cultural artifacts, and neither has carried out any research or preservation work on them. Although Yonaguni's mythical origin story may be untrue, it will likely continue to fascinate a generation of divers to come. Van Fortress, Turkey In 2017, a group of divers discovered a lost castle in the depths of Lake Van, the largest lake in Turkey. From around 2007, the team of divers, led by underwater photographer Tasin Selin, explored the waters beneath Lake Van, documenting microbiolites in archaeological sites. In 2016, the team found a structure outside the harbor of Adil Savaz, a town in Turkey that has been inhabited for thousands of years. It wasn't until 2017 that the fortress was actually discovered, with its walls starting within the harbor and continuing beyond. The site of the ruins covers about one square kilometer, with walls as tall as three meters in some places, and is thought to be 3,000 years old. The spectacular ruins are believed to have been built by the Urartian civilization, an Iron Age kingdom that was centered around the lake and has other stone fortifications nearby. The castle is made primarily of cut stones, and one of the divers found a lion drawing on one of them, a popular motif among the people of Urartu. There had been reports from around the 1950s and 1960s of the existence of the structure, with one intriguing paper published in 1958 by archaeologist Charles Allen Burney and G.R.J. Lawson discussing a medieval castle whose builders had reused blocks that had been constructed by the Urartians 3,000 years ago. More research is needed to determine exactly what the ancient remains consist of. Xicheng, China Often called the Atlantis of the East by travelers, the ancient underwater city of Xicheng, meaning Lion City in Mandarin, is a time capsule of imperial China. Located 40 meters under Chandao Lake in Zixiang Province, 400 kilometers south of Shanghai, the city was flooded by the Chinese government in 1959 to make way for the Xinam hydroelectric dam required for the province of Zixiang. Approximately 300,000 people were relocated as a result of the project, some of whom had families that had lived in the city for centuries. 
many residents were connected to the city based on ancestry and culture. It is believed that the city was built during the Tang Dynasty in 621 AD, making it nearly 1400 years old. The stone architecture is made up of five entrance gates, breaking the Chinese tradition of having only four, and 265 archways feature preserved stonework of lions, dragons, phoenixes, and historical inscriptions. The features date to the Ming and Qing dynasties, with the surviving stonework dating to 1777 and the city walls dating to the 16th century. The city was rediscovered in 2001 when the Chinese government organized an expedition to see what might remain of the lost metropolis. Interest in exploration continued in 2011 when the Chinese National Geography magazine published photographs and illustrations hypothesizing what the city might have looked like in its heyday. Although the city is not huge, its underwater remnants have still not been fully mapped out. Today, advanced divers can get up close to the ruins, with several dive operators offering regular dives between April and November. Plans for an underwater tunnel to open up Xicheng to the general public are in the works. Despite being submerged underwater, the city is protected from wind, rain, and sun damage, keeping it a well-preserved relic of Chinese history. We have a new channel. For more mysteries of the ancient world, click the links above to subscribe to Dark 5 Ancient Mysteries.